Welcome to our second tutorial in Prime Shield series. My name is Rajesh Pachala, and today we will discuss design variation analysis and variation robustness analysis. A few examples to understand the concepts and the value these technologies deliver in terms of PPAR. The version of Prime Shield has several features to analyze timing and voltage variation of the design. The first two features shown on the left side are design variation analysis and variation robustness analysis. And both these features require POCV LVF libraries to perform the analysis. The DVA feature checks design level robustness based on user provided paths. It helps to model the design's WNS distribution based on local variation. Then we have the variation robustness analysis that provides design level coverage by considering all the cells in the design and checks how much variation each cell can have. Based on this information, it determines a collection of cells with high variation or high SIPA failure rate. Both DVA and variation robustness features target weak cells in timing critical paths. A timing critical weak cell simply means a cell having a large POCV variation and high probability to cause timing failure due to insufficient PBA pin slide. These bottleneck cells are typically 1% of the design and we perform targeted ECU on these top cells, which improves overall design robustness without impacting power and area. Let's take a deeper dive by looking at the following examples. Starting with the DVA feature, there are four steps to run design variation analysis and generate the DVA report. First, you need to set PS enable analysis variable to true to enable Prime Shield and all its primary features. Please note this will check out a Prime Shield license. Second, we create a collection of timing paths that result in loss of success rate. Using additional options, we can prune the paths that do not contribute to the success rate loss and helps improve the runtime. Third, we use get design variation command to perform the DVA based Monte Carlo statistical analysis of the given collection of paths and generate a variation object. Finally, we use report design variation command on the variation object to generate a DVA report. Note the use of target success rate option here. It helps evaluate the effort needed at each end point to achieve the target success rate. The DVA report shown at the bottom has six columns. Let's see how to interpret that. The first column is a path endpoint. The second is the success rate, which shows the success rate of the corresponding endpoint, which is probability that the path has a slag of at least zero. Third column is the equivalent sigma, which is the equivalent normal distribution sigma level corresponding to the success rate value for that endpoint. Fourth column is a slack column that shows the amount of timing improvement needed to get to the target endpoint success rate. The fifth column is the adjuster success rate, which is the endpoint success rate after the timing is fixed at that endpoint. Finally, the adjusted equivalent sigma, which is the equivalent sigma level corresponding to the adjusted success rate. From the final design slack distribution, we can then determine the design slack shown at the bottom in blue. The design slack simply means by how much we need to push the timing to get to the three sigma success rate, that is, pushing the entire design slack distribution by a certain value to meet the three sigma success rate. Finally, notice the violation number at the bottom of the DVA report. It simply indicates the number of endpoints which have negative slack. To summarize, this report helps us to analyze the overall design level variation and provides the joint success rate of the design. In the variation robustness approach, we analyze the whole design. That is, the analysis considers all the cells in the design 
and checks how much variation each cell can have. As shown in the graph on the upper right, we determine all the paths going through a specific cell and calculate the worst slag distribution for that cell. Then we compute the modified slag distribution under the condition that this L is at a high sigma, for example, four sigma. And this curve is shown in red. Notice the very small LO area. In this plot, it indicates HSFR. And we compute this for every single cell in the design. And all the cells are sorted based on this HSFR metric. The HSFR of a cell simply means that if a particular cell is at a high sigma, what's the likelihood that the design will fail? The HSFR of a cell is a single event. When a particular cell is at four sigma or above, and the rest of the cells in the, on in the path are at three sigma, then what is the expected success rate loss? The cell robustness report is generated by a report cell robustness command, and the report is shown at the bottom. The cells are sorted based on this HSFR. And then let's move on to for focusing on how to fix these top cells with largest HSFR using fixed ECO robustness, as shown in the example. Notice in the first bullet here, we use command called fix ECO robustness type bottleneck to perform ECO on such weak cells. Here, ECO performs a VT swap based on a user-specified pattern priority. The pattern priority is simply the lowest to highest variation of VT class devices. For example, ULVT comes first, followed by LVT, and then by SVT. Prime shell is prime shield ECO also performs cell sizing. Both cell sizing and VT swap can be used concurrently or even separately. Once the timing is clean, we can provide we can proceed to fix the critical endpoints in the DVA report to further improve the design robustness and improving the overall joint success rate. The two histograms at the bottom capture pre and post ECO frequency distributions. Notice the effect of DVA ECO. The weak cells on the left tail end of the pre ECO histogram are swapped and it moves the complete frequency distribution towards the right. That's the 99th percentile frequency. And we can notice that it moves from 914 megahertz to 941 megahertz without any penalty in power or area. And it also improved the joint success rate from 2% to 65%, which means 65% of our virtual chips have met the target frequency spec. In this session, we have seen how design variation and robustness analysis enables the user to determine timing critical paths and bottleneck cells. And also how to perform ECO to fix these cells and paths to optimize design's joint success rate and high sigma failure rate, with, and eventually to improve your design's overall PPA and robustness. For any further information, please feel free to reach out to your Synopsys AE or the Prime Shield team shown on the slide. Thank you.